So, the original rudder, because this is not... So this is a temporary replacement rudder that's been here for since we've owned it. When they broke this rudder, I was arguing with the previous owner that it had to have punched a hole in the boat because we saw a small repair here and he's like, no, 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 it was a, a cable. Well, we know he was selling uh, porky pies. So... Is that rotten? No, that's actually bilge water that's been sitting inside oh. the inside skin laminate for years. And when they repaired it, they repaired it with a polyurethane foam instead of a proper PVC uh, structural foam. But here's the evidence that, yep, here's the rudder punched a hole in the bottom of the boat right through the inside skin. So the boat technically sank, well, it sank as much as a catamaran could, with a hole nearly as big as my fist. So it just fills up this aft compartment and doesn't actually sink the boat. Big advantage of a catamaran over a monohull. Oh my gosh, so... But now I have to fix it all properly. Yeah. <laughs> But there's, and there's a few other things on the other hull too. Yeah, yeah, I think the same thing was done on the other side as well, but not, not to this extent, so. Oh, both rudders. What do you think you did? Run aground? Yeah. Yeah, ran aground at speed. No words? No words. It's not black like the other side though. No, because they didn't put the uh, shitty foam in there. They just filled it up with resin. So that's, that's a damage to the core, that wedge there. But they didn't fix all the other shit that was shattered. That is... That's, that's our core. And how far would that water have travelled through the foam? Uh, it doesn't, but if there's gaps and cracks like that, it'll travel up the gap and the crack if it's not glued together properly. It's Eric's rigid PVC structural foam. And you just bogged it in? It's all just poosed in for now. And I'll grind this down to shape and then glass over it all. So now the rudder breaks before the boat does? I'm going to put sacrificial tops on the rudders anyway so that, because um, the other issue if you do smack something really hard and bend your rudder shaft it's a really strong top end pokes into the boat and gets stuck there so I'm going to build the new rudders with a piece of softer foam with one layer of glass on it so if it does bend you can break it off and still keep sailing and you're using carbon because I ran out of fiberglass. I don't like using, don't, I don't like doing this, mixing glass and carbon. In a Why not? Structure like this, because you end up with a very stiff patch. Um, oh, it's not the same as the rest of the boat. Yeah. Does it load the boat up, or is this not properly? It's not a loaded area of the boat, so that's why it's like, mm, you know, it's, a, it's not ideal. But by the same token, it's not a, it's not a game changer. I thought you were just going to put the peel post straight on. No. And now you're going to... I'm doing a wet on wet fairing. So then we don't have to sand and bog uh, we'll as much? Yeah, <laughs> step out of the process. And I know I'm getting a really good bond with my filler. It's wet on wet. Is that just with like the little micro balloons? It's going to be easy to sand, uh, or is it a bit structural? This one, no, nah, it's not quite micro balloons. It's a, no, it's not Q cell. Uh, it's an aerosol mixed with microspheres. Reasonably hard. Probably not the best underwater mix, but that's what I have, and it will be well and truly coated with epoxies and stuff. So that won't see any moisture, which is really important. And then I'll peel fly this, and that gets rid of the um, 
sticky clogging up sandpaper issue because it's polyester rubbish. That I don't just slop glass everywhere and anywhere. Um, template it all so I know where it goes. Right, so you've got enough glass to do this because you didn't have enough glass for the yeah, one we well, did with the carbon. Uh, I think I've got enough glass for this. But... Oh, okay, so what's this plastic? Oh, that's your template. That's my template. Okay, so you've just stuck a bit of sticky tape. Yeah. And then those dots. Uh, the different plies. Take this off. So then you just cut out your biggest one. That's the forward. Yeah, cut out the biggest one. So my last layer is going to be a bit of cloth. Hang on, now this is, when you say cloth, yeah. that's the woven yeah. stuff. Yeah. So this is different to a stitched glass. This one is a cloth and it's woven, so that means that it is actually mechanically woven one strand over the other, as you can see, woven in a loom. And the fibres go at what we call zero and 90 degrees. And then this one below here is what we call a stitched fabric. So it's actually just uh, strands of glass. So this strand of glass here, instead of being woven, they put them all side by side in a special loom. And whilst it's held tight in that position, they actually stitch it all together. It means that the fiber stays completely straight. Whereas with this, the fiber actually goes up and down, up and down, up and down which creates a, a problem that we know is crimping. But the fibre is not straight because it changes direction a lot. It weakens it a bit. Yeah, so this one is actually stronger than this one for the same given weight, just because the fibre is continuous and straight. This is not uni, this is double bias. So we have fibre in this direction. You'll see it's at 45 degrees. Yeah. Zero and 90 is the directions of the fibre. Yeah. We and this one, you can see the fibres are going Definitely see that 45 there. Yeah, at 45, and this is a negative 45. And underneath, you can possibly just see through it, is going at positive 45, so it's plus and minus 45. So this one here is what you're gonna use for the inner layers, and yeah, then this is just your covering on the outside. This is the covering side. on the outside. This is good for a little bit of mechanical strength in that uh, ripping, so if we happen to catch something like a, a bit of coral or a rock or um, a buoy and something comes across the hull and scratches it. If you've got just this double bias here, it can pick up a thread and actually pull it out because the glass is quite strong. It'll actually pull and rip the toe out. Actually, we can see it on the bow of the old cut boat here. So this boat is made with all carbon fibre unis. And you can see here, the carbon fibre uni is actually just tearing, picking up and tearing out of the boat. Because the only thing holding it together is glue. With the other woven material, because it's mechanically held together, when something scratches it, it cannot physically pull that toe or fiberglass out. Yeah. So while it's it's weaker in strength as regards to uh, compression and tension and, and loads through the, the vessel, it's actually stronger tearing. Uh, so if you get a scratch, um, those, you can see those fibers are staying in place, moving them around, but they're staying in place. So if that was in resin and it was ripping it, you can't do this with the toe out and go How do you know when you've got enough resin on it? It goes clear. A repaired starboard hull above the rudder. And here is the repair on the port side now, which still needs the glass on top. So. We've had a bit of a distraction now. Look at 
direction? Yeah, because there's a transom going on. A bigger transom than there was before. Can you tell us how that happened? <laughs> well, I had to uh, get inside the boat to do the repair. So I had to chop the transom out. And then when I put the new one back in, I didn't put the old one back in. <laughs> modified the design somewhat. But now we do have a nice step.